Now in the next part, which is the sizing part, the most important point you should pay attention to is the adaptive sizing. As you can see here, the adaptive sizing here, shown in this slide, is disabled, meaning that you have to enter the details of mesh generation all by yourself. However, if you change this adaptive sizing to yes and enable it, you will see that the needed and defined settings will reduce considerably, meaning that the ANSYS meshing software will automatically define some settings based on the geometry and the physics you have selected for it to create mesh over your geometry. Now for example, if I change the use adaptive setting option from no to yes, you will see that the number of settings and options here will decrease. We change the adaptive sizing back to its default, which is no, and then we are going to talk about each of the shown details and settings here one by one. After setting the adaptive sizing to no, you can see different settings from growth rate to capture proximity will appear. The growth rate, as its name says, is the rate at which the size of elements grow, and it can take values between 1 to 5. 1 meaning that there is no growth rate between the elements of the geometry, and 5 meaning the highest growth rate between the generated mesh cells. As for the max size, max size is the maximum size for elements. When you define a value for the max size, the software will create mesh cells with a size equal or less than this maximum size. As for the mesh defeaturing, mesh defeaturing is the capability to remove relatively small parts of the geometry. And you can define the sizes of geometries or parts of your geometry which you want to defeature or remove by entering a value in front of the feature size. Next is the capture curvature. The capture curvature is the capability to generate high quality mesh over curved lines. Underneath it, you will find two different options with the names of curvature mean size and curvature normal angle. The curvature mean size, as its name says, is the minimum size of the element that can be put over a curved line. And as for the curvature normal angle, as you can see in this slide, there is a shape of a circle in which three triangular mesh cells are placed. Now the curvature normal angle, as you can see here, has the default value of 18 degrees, meaning that the software will, for example, create mesh cells over this circle that makes an 18 degrees angle with the center of the circle. Now, if you reduce this angle, it means that higher quality mesh cells will be placed in here. And if you increase this value, it means that less mesh cells will be placed over this curved line, which will result in higher computational time and lower computational time, respectively. The next is the capture proximity, which is the capability to generate high quality mesh over narrow region, small gaps, small holes, and etc. Underneath it, you can find two options of proximity min size and number of cells across the gap. As for the proximity min size, just like the curvature min size, it is the minimum size of the element that will capture that feature, while the number of cells across the gap is the minimum element number that we are able to use and it takes values between 1 to 100. After explaining all the options under the non-adaptive sizing, we changed the adaptive sizing from no to yes to explain the options related to adaptive sizing this time. Now when you change the adaptive sizing to yes, you can see different settings from resolution to span angle center will appear. Now the resolution is the capability to control the density of the generated mesh cells over our geometry, and it takes values between 1 to 7, 1 meaning the biggest mesh cell size or smallest number of mesh cells, while 7 means the smallest mesh cell sizes along with highest possible number of mesh cells. As for the mesh defeaturing, we have explained it in the previous slides about the transition, the transition is the same as the growth rate. And as for the span angle center, it is also same as the capture curvature. Here you can select between three options of coarse, medium, and fine, and you can easily see how they affect the number of mesh cells that can be placed over a curved line. Now for the next step, we need to change the geometry that you can see here in order to see the effect of the options that are below the sitting section when we change them. Therefore, we close the ANSYS meshing software and then in the workbench environment, we double click on the geometry module. In the design software, we simply click on 
create again, go over primitives and then select cone this time. Then we click on the generate button so that this cone geometry is created. We also would like to create a hole under the cone section in order to see the effect of changes for capture proximity. To do that we again click on create, go over primitives and then select box. After selecting the box command on the low left side of the DesignMiller software in front of the diagonal X, Y and Z component, we enter the values of 0.1 meter. Also make sure that in front of the operation you've selected cut material so that a hole is generated inside our cone. After drawing and finishing the shown geometry, you have to close the DesignMiller software and then enter the ANSYS machine software again. After double clicking on the mesh module, a new pop-up window will appear asking you whether you want to read the new geometry or not. You have to click on yes. After entering the ANSYS meshing software, under the sizing section you can see we have enabled the adaptive sizing with its default options and settings. Without any changes, we click on generate button here. Now for the first option which is the resolution, as you can probably remember, the resolution controls the density of the generated mesh cells. For example, if we change the value of the resolution from 2 to a higher value, you can see the density of the generated mesh cells near the tip of the cone will change. By changing the value of resolution from 2 to 4, you can see the size of mesh cells has become smaller while the number of mesh cells near the tip of the cone has increased. We again change the value of resolution to its default value so that we can understand and see the effect of other options alone. As for the next option, which is the transition option, as you can probably remember, it relates to the growth rate of the mesh cells, from the smallest mesh cells to the biggest one. For example, if we set the transition too fast, you can see that the rate of changes from the smallest mesh cells to the biggest mesh cell will increase drastically, and you will see that the number of mesh cells created over our geometry will decrease. As you can easily see now, when we change the transition to fast, you can see the size of mesh cells increase and the number of mesh cells decrease as a result. We again change the transition to its default, which is the slow. The next option is the span angle center, which means that how good we are capturing the curvature and meshing them. For example, if we change it from fine to coarse, the software will decrease the number of mesh cells placed over the tip of the cone and its curvature wouldn't be meshed in proper way. As was previously mentioned, when we change the span angle center to coarse, you can see the number of mesh cells has decreased over the tip of the cone and the curvature of the cone hasn't been meshed or modeled in a quite well condition. Now the options and settings for the adaptive sizing finishes here. Therefore to talk about the options underneath the non-adaptive sizing, we change the adaptive sizing from yes to no. 
As you can see here, the first option is the growth rate. We change its value from the default value to 3 to see the changes and its effect over the meshing of our geometry. As you saw, when we increase the growth rate from its default value, which is 1.2 to 3, you can see the number of missiles created over our geometry decreases and the size of each element increases. As for the maximum size which has the default value of 0.3 meter, the max size as you can probably remember is the maximum allowable size for each element. For example, if we decrease this value from 0.3 to 0.1, you can see the size of my cells will decrease. However, when I change the maximum size to 0.1 meter and then click on generate button, the maximum size and element size option will become yellow indicating a warning or an error inside my settings. As you can probably remember, I talked about the priority of element size under the default section and the sizing section and I mentioned that the sizing section will be in second priority in comparison with the default section. Now here, the software is telling us that the maximum element size that we have entered here is less than the element size that is defined under the default section. And software has no other choice but to obey the element size that is defined as 0.15 which is entered in front of the element size. Now in order to have element size smaller than this size, you have to first decrease the value of element size under the default section. Or you can simply change the maximum size to a value bigger than the element size's value. For example, we enter the value of 0.2 meter. We then again enter the value of 0 for the maximum size so that it can turn back to its default. As for the mesh defeaturing, uh, we disable it since we do not have any features that can be removed through the mesh defeaturing option. The next option is the capture curvature option, which as you can probably remember, indicates how good we are meshing a curve line. We enable this option and then enter the value for curvature mean size equal to 0.001 and then click on generate button. As you can see, again, the number of mesh cells near the tip of the cone has increased to better mesh the curved section. If we also change the curvature normal angle to a less value than the default value, which is 18 degrees, for example, to 10 degrees, you can see that the number of mesh cells will increase over the cone to better mesh the curvature of the cone. Just like the previous ones, we changed the curvature normal angle to zero so that its default value would appear again. As you can probably remember, when we talked about the capture proximity, we said that this option is used when we want to mesh narrow regions or holes or gaps inside our geometry. Therefore, in this slide, we enable this option to better mesh the hole inside the cone. We enable this option and we leave the values of proximity min size and number of cells across gap to its default values. And then we click on generate button. Even with the default values for the capture proximity option, you can see that the quality of mesh cells near this hole has increased. However, we change the values for proximity minimum size and number of cells across the gap separately to see their effect over the meshing of our geometry. Next, we change the number of cells across the gap to 5 and see that by increasing this value the number of mesh cells created over this hole will increase. 